Well, welcome again to the No Legs Podcast with Ken and Larry, uh, walking by faith. Man, I tell you, we have discussed some things over the past few podcasts, and this morning we're going to discuss discouragement and how discouragement is a tool of the devil and how important it is to have the patience of Christ and how to get that into your life. So again, I'm honored to be here with my brother, uh, Pastor Ken Johnson. How you doing this morning, my brother? Brother, I'm doing tremendous, man. So good to be in the house uh, in agreement with God and you yes. this morning. Uh, the No Legs Podcast, man, we are running by faith. By faith. And uh, but what an honor, amen, today just to, you know, minister along the lines, man, on how, yes. how we get through our seasons of discouragement. Because I know many times people think that Man, you know, being a Christian is some type of a fluff and pie in the sky and that we live on the mountaintop. But I come to find out through uh, through living for Christ, that's a very painful walk. Yes. And uh, sometimes in these seasons, man, you suffer uh, what's called discouragement and um, you suffer oppression. And sometimes these things lead you into uh, depression. And uh, it's really understanding the response, how, how we get through uh, difficult seasons as a believers. Because this one thing I can guarantee you, you will have a difficult season in your life uh, serving God, especially if you're seeking and praying and, and ministering and loving and trying to do everything you know to do in, in order to fulfill the call of God upon your life. You may uh, suffer this thing that's called discouragement. And, and me and Apostle Larry, we want to help you on this morning. You know, one of the things that I want the audience to know, like Ken is a above the knee amputation, which I, I truly admire because that means a portion of his thigh is being used as a, as a prosthesis. And that is a remarkable, remarkable um, life that he has that he can able to walk just on that. I, me, I, I think I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, myself, I am a, a, a what they call a bilateral amputee, and that means that both of my legs have been amputated. But fortunately, I'm saying fortunately, I'm a below the knee amputee, so I still have my knees. I can still function uh, with the use of my my knees because it's below my knees. Um, during our time of amputation and, and living for Christ and 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 seeking the Lord. We both have been hit with serious discouragement. I know I had because, see, before I went into the hospital, uh, I may have shared this part. I was so discouraged that I wanted to die. Um, I'm, I'm just being being frank. I was so sick. I was sick for months, almost 11 months. I was sick, um, weakness, exhaustion. Um, not knowing what it is, trying to figure out what it was, and come to find out I had a diabetic ulcer on the bottom of my left leg and my left foot, I mean, and they were trying to figure out aggressive ways to heal that, and it just wouldn't heal, and that was becoming very discouraging to me, and, and to be honest with you, I took my passion off of God during that time. Um, I still believed, I still studied, I still preached, but my passion wasn't there. My, my, my total commitment wasn't there. I was just going through the motions at that time. And I found that I was getting more and more discouraged. Uh, not wanting, not really, just not wanting to live, man. I mean, can you imagine, and maybe some of you have, have been there, where you go almost a year in sickness. I know there's people have been you know, years and years in sickness, but I was going through a year of sickness not knowing what it was. You know, if some if the doctor said, "What well, is this? Is that?" Then I would know how to handle it better. But man, I just didn't know. I I, I just didn't know, and discouragement hit me uh, to the point of I was speaking, and this is the worst thing. Let me die, and my wife my would sit here and listen to me, and she would rebuke that. You know, she would rebuke that, um, and she even called, uh, you know, my bishop and and told him. And he and I hadn't even been talking, you know, for years. But she just saw my my whole demeanor and 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 and, and my whole position um, was going downhill. And so she made that call, and me, me and him went out to lunch, 
and I, I still was ready to clock out. So after that, I go into the hospital and you all, you know, most of you will know the story is that uh, I did die. And that's the thing I want to tell you, whatever you speak out your mouth, it has power, be it good or evil. Mm. You know, God says, I set before you this day, life and death. I set before you this day, good and evil, choose life. Well, man, I wasn't choosing life fulfilled words. I was choosing death fulfilled words. And God is a God. He's a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. Larry, you want to die? I'm going to let you die twice. My God. <laughs> I'm going to let you die two times. You want to die? You're going to die two times in, 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 in two days because you did not want to live. And, and so um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Ken and let him share what he wants to share. Then I'll, I'll be back. Well, you know, Larry, it's uh, powerful in your honesty and transparency, uh, the work that God has done to, to, to help other people. You know, like uh, the other day I was, uh, you know, in a place of a pain, you know, in my body, you know, where just the phantom pains were so brutal at the end of, of, of my stump. And I'm in this boy like care you know like what can you do you know to help me uh, you know and so you know I, I i just really want to piggyback off the point is that man you know the discouragement sometimes that we deal with in life not whether christian or, or, or non-christian but I, I my focus is on believers is that man this walk it is uh it sometimes it's, it's painful and you know and so you go through it physically right? Uh, we're aging, right? You know, it was, we were just bring chickens. And now the reality is, you know, we're in these 50s and, and 60s and, and headed to the 70s, you know, and so all of a sudden you realize, like, I can I can have as much emotional discouragement as I can have physical, you know, pain, yes. you know, when when, when 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 you don't see in your life, what you thought that you would see by now, you know, as many, as many people right now thought they would be married or they thought they would be rich. You know, in, in my case, uh, a lot of people may not know, you know, I've I created uh, some great concepts in, 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 uh, in restaurants. You know, I created Calypso's in Cleveland. I created uh, Mr. Wonderful's. And I'm probably the most copied person uh, in the city as far as uh, restaurants in urban areas in, in, in the Cleveland area. Like, literally, I, I created menus that everybody, you know, took my style of cooking. And a lot of people have gotten rich off of it. So, so when you go through times or tough times financially, you know, in, in your mind, you, you got to know how to, how to bounce back, right? Because that discouragement to see that you created all these millionaires and you struggling, right? Mm -hmm. You serving God faithfully and you struggling, right? You, you like, God, I, I didn't give my life. But, but I tell you this, it's, it's the response in faith. You know, like we got to continue to encourage ourselves uh, in the Lord. We have to be uh, these modern day Davids, yeah? They came in, they stole my ideals, they stole my stuff, right? They just stole, you know, what seemed like uh, is everything and everybody is, is coming against me, right? Uh, and But David, he had to encourage himself in, in the Lord. You yes. know, there has, to be, there has to be a response, right? And, and it's either going to be, I'm going to respond uh, in faith or I'm going to respond, uh, uh, you know, negatively. And, and, and then you, like you said, you're going to get the, the fruit of your lips. Yes. And I have been guilty, like, you know, uh, God, you know, I, I had I, I had to repent, you know, because it, it's it's little things that happen. Like like yesterday, I was uh, on my uh, my food truck, and man, you know, I slipped and 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 I and I almost fell, and I was like, God, you know, I just jumped up like I'm tired, like I'm, you know, why me, you know, like all of a sudden I'm, I'm taking these these moments of of where it seems painful to my soul. And and now I'm I'm responding in, in in the wrong way, and and I'm sitting up there saying, no, I don't want to die. I, I don't want to be ungrateful. I don't want to you know <clears throat> live in, in a sinful place. I, I want to be grateful. I want to have an attitude of gratitude. And, and so for those who have these moments where we fail, you got to come back and say, Lord, give me a crop failure for the word I spoke and that I really didn't mean. And because in the spirit realm, they don't know if you plan, you serious or indifferent. But right. at the end of the day, Lord, forgive me. Uh, of what I've spoken, because I, I I want my faith to work. I've been praying about to come to pass, and for me to see full manifestation of everything that you promised. Because I'm I'm, I'm walking by faith, not my feelings. My feelings will they, they are honest and they they they're real, and 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 it's it's, it's absolutely what I may be feeling at that moment. But my faith is what's going to get me to the other side. I'm a storm, I'm toiling, I'm struggling, but I, I've, I made up my mind, I'm going to allow Jesus in the, in the boat so he can get me to where I'm supposed to be. 
But I got I to gotta stay in faith. I got to keep trusting God uh, in these painful moments. And I like your bounce back, uh, Apostle, your comeback from the from from these tough seasons, from from near death experiences, from from dying and being gone, you know, into the abyss for you know minutes and, and coming back with a hallelujah. You know, I really yeah. like how when you you came back, you came back with a hallelujah. My like, God, thank you for bringing me back. You know, Amen. so it's it's Amen. all in our response. Amen. You know, the book of Proverbs says, uh, Proverbs uh, six two says, "You have been trapped by what you said, wow. ensnared." by the words of your mouth. And that is the truth. I have learned that these lips of clay, as we say before we go preach or whatever in a prayer, that they hold a lot of power for your life. And if you speak death continuously, death is going to come. The wow. reverse of that, if you speak life, Life is going to come into your life. And if you speak it over yourself and your children and other things that you have authority over, life will come to those things. But the enemy will send discouragement right before the blessing hits. Yeah, That's what he does. You know, I'm sure you've heard stories. I, I, I've read several books about how people were, were digging for gold, for instance. And, and oh. they kept digging and they kept digging and they weren't able to find that vein. They found it once, but they couldn't find the vein and they quit. They sold all their equipment. They, they, they got out of the mine and they sold it to someone. And he just dug one more foot Woo. and hit a gold and hit mm. gold. Um, oh my God. These are examples of us. When you know you are discouraged, the Bible says, count it all joy. Yeah. Count it all joy because this is going to be over and your blessing is on the other side of that discouragement. Uh, but it takes patience, man. And I'm not talking about the kind of patience where you're, 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 you know, you're standing in line at the grocery store. I'm talking about the kind of patience that you, one, have, have, Faith in God, where 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 you know that He is a promise, He's going to keep His promise. Yeah. If you read something in this Word and it says He's going to do it, He's going to do it. I I, I love the example. Uh, Ken sent me a um, Pastor Ken sent me a a video from a bishop, and he tells the story of um, I think it's Zacharias, and the angel comes to Zacharias and he tells him, Hey. You're going to give birth, you know, Elizabeth is going to give birth to this child and he's going to be a great man of God and he's going to be the, the he's going to be coming before Jesus Christ and, and all these great things about this, this young lad. But the father, who was old in age, didn't think it could happen. And what I loved about God is he put a gag on her on him. He could, yeah. Zacharias couldn't speak. After the angel said, because you don't believe what God said he's going to do, I'm going to put a gag order on your mouth and you won't be able to speak until that child is born and his name is going to be John. God will shut our mouths at times to keep us from falling, to keep us from missing out on what it is. God had to let me die so that I can stop talking about death. And now, brother, here I am talking about life. My God. My business and, and marriage and other things are prospering because now I understand that these lips must talk and speak life. Yeah. No matter how I feel, no matter how things look, we have to speak life. You know, I have uh, some folks that, that don't believe in God, that, that, that believe in whatever they want to believe in. And I love the fact that they're coming to me, okay, and being able to hear God's words over their lives. And we, I minister to them, even though they don't know I'm ministering to them, okay? But I'm seeing the effects of God's words on their life. Yeah. And this is the power that we have in our lips. If we just hold on, and what I mean by hold on is, okay, the Bible says, 
God wants to hear your voice first thing in the morning. Yeah. When you wake up, that should that should be the first person you speak to. That should be your first thought. Not what I got to do today, not where I have to go. Before your feet hit the ground, or me, my prosthetics get popped into my, my leg. I make sure that I'm giving him thanks, that I'm praying to him, and I'm studying his word. Get some scriptures, read something to start your day off right. When I was feeling down and out and discouraged, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't doing that. No. I wasn't doing it. I, I wasn't doing I wasn't. I studied for a sermon or, or, or a message or something, but I wasn't, you know, having that devotional time with God first thing in the morning. If I did that, I would have avoided a lot of pain and suffering that I went through back in May and June and July, if I had done that. But yeah. I'm learning. I, I, I'm learning. I'm constantly learning that Larry and I know to put God first. But when the discouragement comes, we put him on the back burner, and we yeah. shouldn't do that. We should stick with. As a matter of fact, some people stick with that routine. Stick with the routine of putting God first, and watch what He does. For you, he'll yeah. take you out of that discouragement. Even though all the things are going haywire around you, he will continue to strengthen you. And you are weak. What he said, the Bible says, "When I am weak, he is strong." Yeah, yeah, in incredible. I, I want to uh, jump in. You know, right there, uh, it's the consistency of anything that's going to make you great uh, in life. Uh, physically, uh, spiritually, financially, you know, if I'm if I'm saving that uh, twenty dollars a day, if I'm if I'm if I'm doing my five hundred crunches a day, you know, it, it's what we do consistently. If I'm I'm speaking life, right? Life is gonna gravitate and and, and it's gonna it's gonna come to me because my words are, are powerful. You know, right. God, you know, when when God created uh, Adam, uh, you know, and he and he says, listen, I'm, I'm gonna bring before you. Um, all these different uh, things that hadn't been named and all these animals and whatever you call it, that's what it's going to become. And then they'll find their life in, inside of your words. And so Adam, you know, he, he didn't he, he didn't understand in, in totality that he was a God man. But literally, you know, we've been created after God's image and after his likeness. And this is why Jesus kept operating in that God kind of faith in, in Mark chapter 11. He was just a continuation being the second Adam. But but when you call those things in, you know, that's what that's what they become. And many of us, we've been programming. That's why the devil constantly bombards our mind with, you know, all of this crazy stuff, all this crazy lust. When I, I kissed a girl and I liked it, and, and he keeps on pounding our mind with everything that's uh, that's disconnecting us from, from our walk with God. Because if you sing it, you're still saying it, and you get hmm. the results from it, right? So this is why we got to continue to keep our hearts filled with the Word of God, continue to keep our, our hearts full of worship and, and adoration and, and ministry as they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost spake. We are wow. speaking spirits. You know, we, we have to say wow. it. Jesus comes, man, and the religious people, they could not handle who they who they were uh, and God. But he told them, he says, is it not written, I say it, that you are God's. And in John, you know, chapter 10, at the end of the day, listen to what he says. He says, it's written in your word, I say it. And they thinking mm -hmm. that they 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 finding something outside of him, but he said, "No, I'm I'm the Rama and the Logos. I'm 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 the writer. You keep looking for something outside, but I said who you are. You you are God. You are the God class. I'm not an orangutan. I'm 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 not an apple. I'm not an orange. I, I, I I'm not part of the vegetation class. I'm part of a, I'm, I'm a kingdom citizen, and I have the ability to say to the mountain, be thou removed.' Jesus said, "Have the God count of faith." What does he do? He says what he desires to come to pass. And we have to continue to reset our lives daily and speak what thus saith the Lord. And I just, I believe it's a good moment right now for those that's listening just to say, Lord, forgive me for what I've spoken over my life. Yeah. And you and you know what you've said. You know, you you know, we be talking about I'm a freak and, and I'm nasty and I and I'm broke and the white man keeping me down. And all of a sudden you become everything that you said. You know, it's this mysterious white person got his hand on your on your neck. You know, you you do stuff that you never thought that you would do. Why? You keep speaking it, right? And so Lord, we repent right now. Forgive yeah. us right now. I'm just talking about for those that have the courage, God, give me a crop failure. For the words that I've spoken that's contrary, amen, to what you desire to come to pass and what I desire to come to pass in my life. I repent of those things, God. Now hit the reset button for me, God. Give me more grace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love that. Oh, man, that's that. 
That's good. I love that crop. Give me a crop failure of the things that I have spoken. Oh, that, you know, that is so, so powerful because that is true. You're going to receive, the Bible says, whatever you soweth, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We sow with our mouth. Yes. We sow with our thoughts. You know, folks will ask you, and I'm sure they've, and they've asked me, and I'm sure they've asked you, well, how are you able to, 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 to do what you do? How are you able to get around the way you're able to get around? Well, first of all, to, to my other brothers and sisters out there who are amputees, you have to see yourself walking. You have to see yourself getting around. I, I had a young man call me the other day, and he said, uh, man, Larry, I, you know, I know you drive. And, you know, I call him twin because we both had kidney transplants and we both had right leg amputations. And he said, but I see you driving. How do you do? I said, you don't drive? I said, man, just get in the car. Use your knee. Okay, use the, the feeling of your knee to press down and get off the accelerator. Practice that. You know, uh, he was so happy because he has a truck and he has to be able to drive that truck, but he knows that, that I, I drive and he just wondered, how do I drive? And I said, well, just get in the car, man, and, and feel your, your right foot on the accelerator and lift off and feel, and, and, and if you got two legs, man, so what you do, when I only had the one amputation, I would use my left leg for my brake. And I use my right leg for my acceleration. That's how that's how I used to drive. And he never imagined himself driving. But he's but I yeah. believe I, I haven't talked to him, but I believe he's driving now. Because he just never saw himself, imagined himself driving, because he had didn't have no legs. Brother, I, I don't have two legs. So yeah. you know if I don't have two legs, you know you can drive. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and so you have to imagine yourself doing what you you want to do in your life. And and that and I love the Bible. And Ken brought it up too. that meditation, that meditation, folks, means that that's your inner voice talking to you. What does your inner voice tell you? And then you have to be careful not to grab a thought from the enemy and start meditating on that. You have to cast down the wicked imagination, the thing yeah. that is not of what you want to happen in your life. If, if if you cast that wicked imagination down and continue meditating on what you do want in life, it will happen. You are you are made in the image of God. God thought about the planet before He created the planet. God thought yeah. about light. He thought about Adam and Eve and and everything that you see. Was a yeah. thought first. Yeah. And then he said. And then he said. And then he saw that it was good. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, as as believers, man, we got to really believe. You know, yeah. we got to stay in faith. And uh, we got to be consistent. You know, at, at the end of the day, that, that's my whole life. You know, I turned 53 recently. And I'm sitting up there yeah. saying, you know what, my next uh, 53 years, Lord, I'm strong finish, body yeah. strong, mind strong, money strong, spirit strong, power strong. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep speaking it because I, I believe it. As, as you believe, you know, you'll speak, right? And so we can't let what we've been through and, and the failure and uh the discouragement, we can't let us we gotta constantly hit the reset button and live from resurrection yeah. life. Man, I, I'm living out of resurrection Woo! life. No, his hand is on my life. Yeah. I am anointed, I'm a vessel of honor. And uh, God has more grace for me and for you. For those that's listening, God has, he has more for you to do. Come on, you got to say it. You, I, I am blessed. I, I am yes. favored. I, I'm, I'm an anointed vessel. God, he's using me dynamically and supernaturally. I was ministering um, uh, last weekend uh, at a church. And, uh, you know, we have our points, you know, ready. But when I got to the third point, I recognized that the anointing was in the house. And uh, there was a man uh, in there, and um, he said that uh, he was going blind. And, uh, man, I remember, and all of a sudden, my spirit said, come on, pray for him now. And so, man, I jumped down off the uh, the uh, pulpit area, 
and the spirit of God got to move. And I, I prayed for this man, uh, laid my hands on, believe God for his healing. Then God baptizes him in the Holy Ghost. He starts speaking in tongues for the first time. Amen. Yeah. And then the spirit breaks out in the room. Amen. And now we, we got, uh, uh, I'm talking about power is flowing, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, you can sit back and, and do nothing or you can demonstrate that God is in us. You know, you can demonstrate what you've been speaking over your life. No, I, I'm, I'm a chosen vessel. My shadow heals. My words bring fear feeling power. When I open up my mouth, amen, the glory falls and, 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 and I shift atmospheres. I'm an atmosphere shifter, hallelujah. Amen. And my situation yeah. is changing. I'm just telling you, I, I, I'm not going to live in discouragement. I'm going to shake it off. Come on, somebody. You got to shake that stuff off you. Yeah. You know, just the same way uh, Paul on the island of Malta, you know, uh, that, that viper jumped out of that fire. He's sitting there and, you know, and, and you got to learn how to shake that devil off yeah. and say, no, and I'm, I'm going to live and not die. And I'm going to declare the glorious work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm living. I'm, I'm not dying. My best days are in front of me. My healthiest days are in front of me. My richest days are in front of me. Hallelujah. I'm preparing. Amen. Listen, I'm preparing right now for where I'm going, what I'm going to build, what I'm going to drive, and how it's going to be in debt freedom. And God is going to orchestrate my steps, order my paths. Amen. And I'm going to think bigger. Amen. I'm going I'm to work smarter. And I'm going to experience, amen, encouragement. Because I've made up in my mind, I'm going to live, amen, from my wealthy place and as God's child in, in this realm of men. And we're going to live in complete victory. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. And that, and, and, and that is how you got to speak and think about yourself and your situation. That was excellent. That's how you have to see yourself. You cannot let other people define who you are. You can't identify yourself with others. The Bible tells us in, in Psalm chapter one, and this is one of my, my, my favorite scriptures. It says, it says, uh, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Yeah. Sit not in, I think it's, yeah. Walk not in the counsel of, of the ungodly. Sit not or stand in the way of sinners and sit not with the scornful. What he's telling us, who are you hanging around? What are you hanging around? Yeah. Are, when, when, when you get on Instagram, is, 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 it, is it the big butt girls that you, you're looking at all day? Or are you looking at things that are going to help you achieve your goal? See, wealthy people do one thing, and, and they do it all the time. They are consistent in what they do and what they read and yeah. what they say about themselves. Period. They don't get distracted. I consider myself wealthy today because I don't let things distract me from where I plan on going and what I plan on doing. Yeah. When I read, I read the Bible. When I when I speak, I speak the word. When I with my wife, we speak the word. And it doesn't have to and, it, and the word is never boring. Like this conversation me and Ken, this is not a boring conversation. This is a life-giving, life-sustaining conversation that can take you out of discouragement and into your blessings. Pastor yeah. Ken, close us out with prayer, please. Yeah, well, Father, I just pray for every person that's listening on this moment. Lord, I pray that you would encourage them. I pray that discouragement is broken. I break every every curse of discouragement, every hex of discouragement, every spell of discouragement. I break its power. I come against darkness and depression and heaviness and despair. And I command every attack of the enemy to be broken in the name of Jesus. We are null. Every, every assignment of the enemy and the handwriting of ordinance against us, we break its power of the enemy that will work in darkness and, and come together in boardrooms in order to destroy us. God, break their power and release grace and dispatch Michael and Gabriel, the minister of spirits, the warring angels, the flames of fire. God, dispatch God, Lord, the, the host of heaven to give us complete victory in every area of our lives, God. I pray, God, for the release of increase that it would come from the east, the west, the south, and from the north. And I pray, God, that you would bless your people, God, with peace and joy, that their countless, God, Lord, would it would be, Father, shining with the glory of God, and that you would give them peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, Douse them, God. Overpower them with wealth and prosperity and let the joy of the Lord be their strength. Show them your goodness in the land of the living and do it for your name's sake. Your name is on the line concerning those who hear this word. God, encourage them and bring them out. Take them over and show them, Father, your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Kidd, again, I want to thank you so very much, man, for just coming up with this idea 
and uh, helping, encouraging me to be an encouragement to others. You you really have uh, given me a, uh, how do I say, an additional part of my life. Because, you know, I do podcasts, but I never did my own. And if it wasn't wow. because of you, brother, I, I probably wouldn't be in front of this camera today. But I thank you so very much for your words of encouragement today. And we hope to see you all next week with episode four. Amen. God bless. God bless.